Hey guys, my name is Jeff, and this is the most powerful Honda Civic ever produced, the 2023 Honda Civic Type R, but it is so much more than that. The brand new 6th generation Honda Civic Type R, or FL5 as it's known internally, is based on the 11th generation Honda Civic, but comes with many considerable improvements over its predecessor. Most notably, it features new reserve styling, which was one of the biggest complaints of the previous car, or the FK8 as it's known, and it even features more power and more rigidity. The Honda Civic Type R is a track-focused weapon that has even been developed on real racetracks. They use the likes of Suzuka Circuit, Nürburgring, Takasu, and even Tsukuba to develop this car, and in the process, managed to set a front-wheel drive production car record around Suzuka Circuit in 2022 with a pre-production model. Then, in 2023, managed to set another front-wheel drive production car record with a production model around the Nürburgring, which is pretty impressive and speaks volumes of the engineering and prowess that has the Honda Civic Type R. And on top of that, today in this video, we'll be talking about everything that makes this car so great, starting with the exterior, we'll do the interior, the powertrain, and of course, we'll take it for a drive. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and dive into the exterior of our Type R. So, one of the first and foremost cool things to me is that our car is finished in championship white over a black and red interior. And championship white is a staple in the Honda community, and for a good reason. Not only has it come on previous Type Rs, but it's also come in other performance models like the NSX. And the paint itself comes from a famous Formula One car from 1965 that won the Mexico Grand Prix, which is a pretty cool thing, because obviously racing heritage is always good in a car like this, that's meant to go racing. So some pretty cool details there. Now let's get into the important stuff. So with this new Honda Civic, I mentioned the exterior styling. Most importantly, it's a departure from the previous FK8 generation, which I actually managed to run into and park the cars side by side. So you can see the front and then the rear of the two cars. You can make that decision for yourself, whether you prefer the more reserved styling of the new FL5, or if you like the old aggressive styling of the FK8. With that, everything on this car is just as functional as ever. And let's go through and point everything out. So starting in the front here, of course, we have our 11th generation Honda Civic nose, but there's a bunch of changes. First and foremost, we have our red Honda badges and our Type R badges, reminding us that this is, in fact, a performance car. And on here, we actually have our aluminum hood with a vent, but this is not just any vent. It's a functional vent, which takes some of the radiator flow and even some of the hood heat and dissipates it out of the top here, giving you better airflow and obviously a cooler radiator temps, which is always a good thing. Below that, we do have our intercooler, which is very massive for our turbo that you can see in there. And then to the right of that, these little triangles here are actually our brake ducts. So those are taking in air from the front and they're directing it to our big Brembo brakes here on the side, which is an awesome feature, very important in front wheel drive cars where the front wheels can heat up very quickly because they are the powertrain and the main braking gets done at the front. Next to that, we have these cool little side vents. And while these may look like just cosmetic options, those are actually aero. These add more downforce and they look stylish at the same time. As we move on to some of the other bodywork, you can see that the car has also been widened. While we have the same basic silhouette as our sort of hatchback 11th gen Civic, we've got maybe an inch, an inch and a half of extra width added onto each side. And as we get around to the side here, we have some more cool details, which includes our wheels and tires. So what's different from the FK8 generation is these wheels are actually smaller. The previous generation had 20 inches, but on our new Type R, you can see that we have 19s. We're running 265s in the front with 13 0.8 inch discs and our course our Brembo brakes and the cool part about that is because we have these smaller wheels and tires that means that the actual contact patch for the tire is going to be bigger thus more grip with the new Honda Civic so that's pretty cool very important for a track monster not to mention the fact that the wheels are black and then we also have black lug nuts as well so everything matches has a really clean approach and you can see just the clearance there between the actual brake caliper and our wheel so a pretty cool feature right there. So as we continue our way down the car, we have our power adjustable mirrors. We do have our keyless entry door, which is always nice. A fairly swept back windshield with some very narrow A-pillars to make it easy to see out of. I like the black in here. It's a nice centered look that makes the car look a little bit sleeker, almost as if it's all one window, which is a fairly cool piece. You actually have more room in this rear door compartment than the previous gen. And then you can see we've got some cool sporty side skirts with these vents as well that are obviously going to be specific to our Honda Civic Type R and our rear brakes, which are a little bit smaller than the front. But again, most of that braking is going to be done with the front, so that's not that big of a deal. 
As we come to the back, we have some more Type R bits, uh, most notably this big spoiler. So spoiler alert there. It's a fairly sizable spoiler, but still leaves room for our little rear hatch wiper. And of course, this being a hatch, you have a fair bit of space in there as well. So I can go ahead and open this up, go ahead and pop our hatch. And then you can see in there our total space. Nothing crazy. It's cool. Everything's fairly rigid. Go ahead and drop that down. Honda Civic taillights, more red Honda badging, and of course, Type R. So, and then lastly, below here, we do have a rear diffuser that looks very nice, but then we have our famous Type R triple exhaust. Now that triple exhaust, the outside ones are going to be our sort of standard exhaust. It's kind of misleading because this is a four cylinder and you have three exhaust pipes, but that center one is going to be your sport valve exhaust. So that's going to be the one that opens up occasionally when you need it in your Type R modes, or as you reach the higher side of the tack, that'll open up, give you a bit more volume and just give you some of that sporty flow along with some of the uh, flow increase, which is over the previous generation car. So with that, let's go ahead and move on to the interior and see what's going on in there. Okay, so now we're sitting on the interior of our Type R, and I do have the AC on because it is rather hot in here, so I want to be able to survive while we're going through this. But first off, let's talk about some of the cool materials. Obviously, we have a lot of red with our sports seats here, but just a really cool interior. Now, obviously, it is based off of the 11th generation Civic, so you're not going to be able to hard change everything, at least not without adding a ton of cost. But there are some cool touches that get added to the Type R to make it stand out from some of the standard cars. One of the first things I want to show you is actually over here on the passenger side. We have Type R Civic, and as you can see, 00275, that is actually going to tell us that that is our VIN number, so we know which number of our Type R that we have, and so it makes you feel a little bit more unique and makes you feel special for having one of the select 2023 Type Rs. Now, on top of that, we have some other more performance goodies, even some other throwbacks like this aluminum shift knob, which does get hot, um, but that's just a Phoenix thing with how hot it is out here, but it's a pleasure to use. We also have, obviously, our red Honda badging, same as the exterior, to remind us that we are, in fact, in a performance model. Now, there are some other luxury options. It is a race car, so there is some stuff that's uh, sort of uh, basic, but one of the cool things is our Bose 12-speaker uh, premium audio system, which sounds fantastic, and of course, it's nice to have luxury audio. If you're just cruising on the highway, not doing anything sporty, don't want to listen to the high revving uh, inline four there, then you don't have to. You can go ahead and pump some tunes instead, but let's talk about some of the other materials. Over here, we obviously have a lot of red, including the carpets, which can be mixed on how you feel about them. But looking at our seats here, we do have some embroidered Type R logo badging in here. That's pretty cool. We have our Sport. It's not exactly suede, but it feels like suede. It's a very similar material. There's obviously lots of heavy bolstering in these seats, including thigh bolstering, which can make the ingress and egress or getting in and out of the car a little bit difficult, but it's not that big of a deal because obviously these are meant to hold you in place while you're riding around in the car, and they do a great job of that. They make you feel nice and cozy and will hold you tighter than your mother. So that's a, a pretty cool thing to have in there. Now, looking at some of the other features in there, obviously we have all digital displays in here. We have our sort of main 9-inch display over here. Then we have a 10.2-inch that's actually going to be our digital uh, gauge cluster. And now everything is fairly functional. This is fairly basic. There's nothing crazy in here. It's responsive enough. Um, nothing crazy. You do get one of the more interesting things, along with wireless CarPlay and Android Auto, is the fact that you also get this Honda Log R system. And this Honda Log R system is essentially one of the performance things and how a lot of places have either their timing computers, things like that. You can see that this gives a lot of the, there's the <laughs> exterior air temperature, so you can see what I'm talking about here. It's uh, hotter than that outside, actually. 99 is a little bit on the low side, but you can see all the various things that you would want when you're doing performance. It'll even do data log and things like that, various, uh, even auto score that'll help rate your driving and things like that on the track so you can improve your time. So that's a, a cool thing that's obviously specific to the Type R, and even having graphics with the Type R is always fun. You could even add uh, G meter instead of the 3D look of the car. So some cool stuff in there, and obviously some of that can be adjusted depending on what you want to your liking. So that's a quick look at that screen that's about to be ex as expected. However, this, we have all sorts of interesting stuff going on in this main display here. So first of all, you can see these lights at the top. These are actually shift lights. So while you're going underway, as you get uh, climb up your tack over here and get to the higher RPMs, you'll have your shift lights come on to help you uh, and tell you when to shift, which is kind of interesting. The fuel gauge is on the outside here. You can see we got the temp on the uh, left side as well that are kind of off, not in the main center digital display, but you can even adjust some of the things that are in here. So you can actually take your thumb and cycle through some of the different menu options that are in here. You can see we've got navigation, uh, we got our turbo boost, 
various controls, G-Force, all that type of stuff. But you can even adjust some of the other things going on inside the car as far as like the actual physical display. So for example, in here you can actually customize the display, then you can go into gauge design, and you can even change it into if you wanted to go to the bar style, for example. It'll change things, uh, kind of depending on your preference. If you wanted to open it up, maybe you'll have it feel less crowded, whatever the case. But I personally like the pseudo analog feel with all the digital gauges. And you can have your fuel economy up, which is not the main reason you buy this car. But maybe you care about your fuel economy. And obviously, you can get better fuel economy as long as you stay out of the gas pedal and out of the turbo. There are some other options. Just below there, you can see we have some of the cool sport pedals. There's red stitching and a lot of the black that you can see here. Two cup holders, more of that pseudo suede material. And obviously, we've got some room in here not the biggest pocket ever but this being a honda civic you also have the hatch in the back seat which we'll talk about more in a sec one of the other cool things is i like the honeycomb patterns in here for how you actually adjust the vents and gauges it's really easy and straightforward but it's kind of cool that it hides them it makes for a much cleaner look we do have dual zone climate control so you have your different controls here you can see we got the driver and passenger sides along with our various noms which even have little digital displays in them which is pretty cool and then below that, we have some more USB. This is interesting because these are obviously the standard USB connector ports. And obviously, you do have your um, standard sort of outlet there um, that you can use as opposed to a lot of cars which are starting to use USB Type-C. But below that, we have a wireless charger that I found to be one of the better wireless chargers you can find in a car. This one has been able to charge through my case that says it is compatible with wireless charging, so I've had no issues there. And of course, we get to our six-speed manual shifter, which is always nice and has a pretty easy time going into gear. And then on top of that, we have some of our sport mode buttons. So this car is equipped with four different drive modes. So this is the way that you adjust your main drive modes. If you go through it here, you can see we're currently in sport, but then we also have individual, which is essentially a custom mode where you can set up yourself, sport, and then comfort. So comfort, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take that adaptive suspension, loosen it up, and there's a noticeable difference. You can feel the shift as you adjust the car on the fly. I would say comfort is best suited for freeway driving so you don't have any hard landings. And then sport will obviously stiffen up the suspension a little bit. But let's say sport is not quite enough. We have one more drive mode and that's right here. This is our R button or plus R or type R mode, whatever you wanna call it. If you go ahead and press that, we get some more animations on both, but we get a total change here. So you can see it shows us our gear speed front and foremost, along with our tack that runs along the top. So if I go ahead and give it a rev, you can see our tack runs through there, but pretty cool. Um, as you can see it's got a lot of the other info. It puts more important stuff in front of you, like the actual performance of the car, boost, temperatures, things like that. Stuff that's going to be more important while you're at the track. So our mode is obviously for the track, and it's a very, very stiff mode. So you're not going to want to use this on the freeway or if you're driving on regular city roads, as I could really beat you up driving in that. But maybe you do. If you have smooth roads and want to make sure your car is as planted, level as possible, and revving up those gear changes, then maybe that's the mode for you. But I'll leave that up to you to decide. And then obviously over here, we have some of our basic controls. We have obviously our rear window controls, the locks, um, even the power adjustable mirrors, all sorts of good stuff like that. Some of our various uh, Honda driving assists are over here. And then obviously these scroll wheels that I've been using to adjust some of the gauge displays and things of that nature that's available. You can see you can adjust the radios, things like that. Skip songs, adjust your volume with this little toggle switch. And then you do have a physical audio knob here as well. So that's all fine and dandy glove box, basic controls. One of the cool things that you won't see right now is these are actually LED lights that glow red at night. You can get some red underglow in here. It's a really cool ambient lighting system for the car that I think just adds to the Type R. And then we even have traction control, which could be turned off over here. So that's a quick look at everything in the front interior of the car. Now I think it's about time that we jump in the back seat and see how that fits. All right, so I wanna get into the back seat here. And I've currently got the seat all the way back. But I've still got legroom. With the this is the, the seat all the way back, so I have plenty of room up front to film videos, and I've actually got legroom. You can see we've got more of a Type R badge in there, more of our speakers as part of our audio system. You get their own controls, and then nothing crazy. You don't get any cool vents or any added USB things back here, but it's not really suited for people to be riding in. And then of course you get some cup holders, so that means that the Type R is actually a four seater, and it's not going to be used for uh, probably your road trip car. People aren't going to want to sit back here, but it's here nonetheless if you absolutely need to use it. So as far as just headroom, as I'm sitting in the back here, I'm about six foot for reference. And as you can see, my head actually does kind of touch the top, 
but I could definitely sit back here. It wouldn't be that uncomfortable or anything if we were just driving somewhere locally. Um, would be no problem. So if you've got kids that could easily fit back here and it would be easy to transport them, there's enough leg room even with the seats fairly far back, but you probably wouldn't want to take this on road trips, at least with adults in the back. And these could of course be folded down and even split if you need to, but you've also got more of your cargo space in the back for that back hatch, which is also super helpful. And one of the cool things that you can kind of see is you can see some of the spoiler here, but the spoiler is actually high enough that it doesn't really block your rear visibility out of the interior of the car. So that's something pretty cool that I thought was worth pointing out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what's under the hood of our Honda Civic Type R. So here's our engine here. Obviously, this is a turbocharged 2-liter 4-cylinder. It's actually the K20C1, and it is shared with the previous generation, or FK8 Honda Civic Type R, but it has been improved by 9 horsepower to bring us to a total of 315 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. And it's a pretty good-looking engine cover, nonetheless. Obviously, we have some fake carbon and stuff, but it presents itself pretty well. Red always means performance, so some cool highlighted bits, fairly easy to get access to a lot of stuff. I like that it's not overly complicated or anything. It's just a generally good looking engine cover in a world of mostly boring engine covers or where they try to hide everything. So I think it's pretty cool. You can even see some of our functional ducting for our scoop there in the aluminum hood. So all good stuff there. Lots of weight savings options. You consider the 315 horsepower car and it only weighs 3,188 pounds thanks to our aluminum suspension components, which are connected with our adaptive dampers that do wonders for all of our different drive modes. And then the other cool part is this engine is it's front wheel drive, but it's only available with a six speed manual transmission and it even includes a limited slip differential in the front. So all very cool performance based options. And the fact that it's only available with a manual transmission makes this quite the performance go getter. Some of the other changes that happen is we get better rev matching as well with our transmission. Everything just speeds up a little bit in terms of going for a more responsive engine and just better results. Now what that'll mean is that this car, because it is a manual, it's going to be a little bit slower on that zero to 60. You're looking zero to 60 in around five seconds. Obviously, it depends on your manual shifting skills. You might be better than others. But on top of that, we have a top speed of around 169 miles per hour, which could be partially aero limited. And obviously, there's a, a very amount of drag with the added wide body, things like that. But a very good looking car with a ton of performance. And at the MSRP of $43,000, all in all, it's not bad at all um, At if you can get a car around MSRP. So that's a pretty cool feature, nonetheless, that I thought was worth pointing out for the engine. Not that it's the main reason you're going to buy this car, but let's talk fuel economy numbers for a sec. So if you drive this car somewhat economically, you can expect a low range of around 22 city and 28 highway and 24 combined. What that means is with the 12.4 gallon fuel tank, you get an estimated range of around 300 miles, which isn't huge, but you can definitely get better numbers as high as 30 miles per gallon even if you really treat it nicely. The main problem is going to be the minute you get into that gas pedal and activate that turbocharger, you have just thrown all of your gas mileage out the window and this thing will be sucking down gas and providing you with all 315 horses to those front wheels. So important things to keep in mind and maybe plan out your route and make sure you've got some gas stops along the way if you're a bit of a heavy foot. Okay. So what's it like to drive the Honda Civic Type R? Well, it's fantastic, to be blunt with you. The seats are comfortable. It has a super awesome sporty ride. Obviously, being only available with a six-speed manual transmission means that Honda built this car for the enthusiast. And they do a good job of delivering on the driving characteristics of the car as well. Now, it's no surprise that the shifting feel is fairly good, even the clutch pedal for that matter. Honda has always built great manual transmissions, and the Civic Type R is no exception. So that's always nice to say. And uh, this car even has updated rev matching for the FL5 over the previous generation car. So that's always a cool thing that's been added as well. And it works fairly well. Some people can be annoyed, I know, by some of the different systems that exist, but that's not the case here in this car. So that's a pretty cool, awesome feature at that. As far as the general driving appeal, you have great visibility. As I mentioned earlier, the A-pillars themselves are very narrow. And when you're bumping tunes, you won't have any problems. You won't need to turn the volume down from your 12 Bose premium audio system so you can see better. That was a, that was a joke. Anyway, 
as you're driving the car, let's talk about the actual performance characteristics. So this has adaptive suspension. That is absolutely fantastic. And the cool part is, is as you switch through the four different driving modes, which I like that Honda didn't go crazy on. Some cars have seven or even 12 different driving modes, but just four here, because really that's all you need. Obviously it's a performance car. They don't want to mess around with that by having eco modes and normal modes. Those don't matter. But what it does have is a very different system. If you have the car in comfort, it is very clearly set up in a very floaty manner that makes it much more pleasurable to drive in a freeway setting, which I can really appreciate. It's a noticeable difference as you switch between the different modes. When you have the car in the sporty setting, that definitely stiffens things up a bit, which I would prefer for street driving. That's where I've left the car for the majority of the time driving it, because you can go over various potholes and street imperfections and not have any problems at all with the car, and it can be a ton of fun to drive. It's a little bit more vocal on the engine interior, the comfort mode will quiet things down a little bit, but it's much more vocal, fun to drive in that sporty mode. So that's a fantastic mode to daily drive in. But if you want to take it a step up, if you go to a track or you even just want to drive it hard and you have smooth roads, you put it in the R mode. I wouldn't recommend it, putting it in the R mode to daily drive it. I know it's tempting. I've tried it. The thing is, is it stiffens the suspension so much so that you can hit a pothole or something like that and it just feels like it just compresses your spine. It's not a great feeling. And that's not the car's fault. That's just our bad roads here in the U.S. So nothing on the car, but something to keep in mind. It shouldn't be a problem if you go to track days or if you live in an area with better, newer roads, which of course is a huge advantage. And as far as the overall feel, I'm currently heading towards the freeway because I want to give you some great audio of the car accelerating quickly on the, the, the freeway, spiritedly, so to speak. Um, but uh, it's, it's a fantastic car. And as far as the gas mileage, it's pretty easy to get well within those EPA ratings, as I mentioned earlier, and even getting better improved numbers. I really like just the general steering feel as well. In the normal sort of sports settings, it's not um, too light. It's not over boosted by any means, but it's also not too heavy. And obviously that can be adjusted for the individual custom settings. And in the Type R mode, it does get a bit heavier where you start to feel a little bit more tone on your uh, actual forearm, so to speak, as you get aggressively driving. It could even get to the point where if you do a long enough drive, you can find yourself out of breath getting a good workout in, which is always a good sign. You have good bolstering. You're not really moving around a lot as you're uh, going into the car. And the added leg bolstering as well is a nice pleasure, even if you can make the ingress and egress of the car a little bit more aggressive. But no real complaints there. There's a quick pull in the Honda Type R. You can hear as it gets up there. It's a pretty awesome car. Um, and then you get the freeway speeds in no time, obviously. This car is super quick and you'll have no problem um, getting it anywhere on the back roads. So you'll probably have a hard time finding it. most people that can keep up with you on the back roads with the way that this car is. It accelerates super quick. It's so stable that you're not going to find the car shifting its weight really in any one direction. It does a fantastic job with the adaptive dampers of staying planted. I just love the way this car feels, not to mention the high revving nature and it just sounds great. So that makes it a pleasure to drive. Downshifts are easy with the rev matching, and you can have a ton of fun with this car no matter where you decide to take it. So let's talk about the not so fun parts about this car. And that is of course gonna be the price. So the Honda Civic Type R comes in around $44,000. It's a little under that, comes in at 43 and some change. And unfortunately, you won't find them for that price. The, the sad nature is I did some research to see what these were generally trading hands for is even though the MSRP is $44,000, I found some used cars, one with 6,000 miles on it, one with 11,000 miles on it, and both had an asking price of $55,000. That's $10,000 more than the MSRP of this car new, and that was for used cars with thousands of miles on them. And then to make it worse, if you want a new one, you could be spending as much as seventy or even $80,000 to buy a new Honda Civic Type R. And to me, that's just not cool. That's one of those things that it just, it really sours the value that you feel like you're getting. At $44,000, you get the king of the front wheel drive cars. You get a cool package that's somewhat practical with back seats and even some trunk space and fantastic performance. Obviously, you don't need 
neck brake shattering performance, but you can take this car to a track day and be happy and enjoy it. You can take it to autocross and it'd be a fun car to drive or even just as a daily driver, it's just a pleasure to drive. But it really sours the car once you get over $50,000 because you've opened up the car into a different value proposition and there are so many other cars that get into some higher price points that might look like better deals to you or might appeal to you more than a four cylinder turbo front wheel drive car. And that's not to a dig on this car, but I'm saying is, is the price was good where it was at for the MSRP. And the dealer higher prices, even the special color options of the end of the FK generation suffered the same problem. We live in a world of EDM currently. And it's, it's a real shame because it, it doesn't help the cars. Imagine how well these cars could sell. They might be more, you might see them more frequently and you just don't see them that often these days, which is kind of disappointing. And that's the biggest shame about this car. But ultimately, I don't want you to take everything that I say um, for, for granted. I think most importantly, if you are interested in a Honda Civic Type R, I urge you to either rent one or go ahead and go to your local dealership and take one for a test drive to see how you like it. Because obviously my opinions might vary from what you think or based on height and just general comfort fittings of the car, you have to experience it for yourself. But with that, that's gonna be the end of the video. If you enjoyed it and could hit that like button for me, I would really appreciate it. And consider getting subscribed for more content like this in the future. If you can comment down below, let me know if you've ordered one or if you've already got one or what you think about the new Honda Civic Type R. I'm interested and I try to reply to everybody. And of course, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.